Okay, designers, part two of day two of our graphic design boot camp. So far, we've talked about text and images needing to play with one another. We've talked then about use of the diagonal. The third thing we talked about was framing. And remember, there's two parts when we say framing. What do we mean by that? And now, let's go to the next thing. Now, this one you intuitively already know, colors that the use of colors can be very, very important when it comes to graphic design. Um, I want to focus in on that word connotation. I'm an English teacher. You should know what connotation means if you don't. It means the emotional meaning that we attach to words. Um, an example I always give is a home. A home has a denotation, a definition. So that's for a structure with four walls, a roof, you know, a building. But a home also has a connotation. A home is a place where we feel safe, we feel loved, right? If the word shack, same denotation, a structure with four walls and a roof, but the connotation's quite different. I feel that's a place of uh, maybe poverty, a place that's run down, a place that's not comfortable to live. A mansion, same denotation, a structure with four walls and a roof, a really big one, but then it has the connotation of wealth, prosperity, um, having made it success, right? So let's talk about colors. Very, very famous image by Shepard Fairey, a graphic and street artist kind of from the Boston area where I was living. And with your partner, can you pause the video and can you talk about what are the connotations of the colors that are used in this famous image from Barack Obama's campaign? Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm not really sure what you came up with, but red, white, and blue, but in a different way. Um, red, white, and blue for the Americans, this is kind of like quintessentially American. Uh, we say the colors of our flags are red, white, and blue. And we have a white, that's kind of beige, right? The red and the blue. But this kind of color uh, was meant to kind of be a take, a new uh, style of patriotism, I think would be the way to say it. It's that classic red, white, and blue American patriotism, but in a new version for a new generation. And of course, Obama signified that for many people. Now, let's do the same thing with some classic images. I'll put myself up here so you can kind of see me. But I have two posters here from the WWF, the World Wildlife Fund, that are directly connected to the, our next studio topic, climate change. Could you, with your partner, talk, pause the video, and talk about the connotations of these two different images? Welcome back from that discussion. Here's what I think. First, um, the connotations of the image on the left are the polar ice caps, looking at the ways um, cold, the places where we have freezing, and of course that polar bears are nearing extinction because their habitat, the ice flows, aren't freezing and it's not having enough um, um, cold, you know, because of climate change that we're having those issues. Is it dire? No, maybe the connotation is more like of a temperature of a cold ice cap and the things, the great thaw that's happening. To the right, of course, I think we have more of an urgent connotation, this notion that we must act now for climate change because of the red background. And it also, uh, I think, connotes heat, the notion that as the climate is heating up, things like polar bears or penguins are struggling to survive as we're dealing with these ice melt. And that's all within those color connotations that are there. Here's two more images that I'd like you to have the same discussion. Pause with your partner and talk about what is the connotation of colors here. Welcome back from your conversation. Um, black on both situations of both posters kind of makes it seem very urgent or dark. It is a dark topic and one that's difficult to talk about. I think in the one on the left, the graphic designer is using high contrasting colors. If you have black using white or yellow on that black or any other thing that has a high contrast to the black um, can really make an image stand out. And since this is all about reducing consumption of electricity, they're really showing you that kind of lit light bulb and saying, hey, let's try to not keep the lights on as much. And in a really clever design, it goes back to our first principle of text and images playing, where the threads of the light bulb 
are just the text of what they wanted to use and giving you the shape of the light bulb. I thought that was really interesting. But the connotation is one that time is now, it's urgent, let's reduce the lights that we're using. And then to the right, you have the same instance of black, but very clever image where the earth is melting as an ice cream cone is melting. And of course, if this were a different background than black, you would have um, almost somebody might say, oh, that's kind of funny or that's interesting or that's a clever image. But by putting the black in, it brings in a note of seriousness, of sobriety and saying like, yeah, ice cream cone. Usually you say, ooh, wonderful summer ice cream cone. It's a positive connotation. But the black surrounding it gives it and turns it to the negative connotation of climate change. Okay, maybe you said something like that. It's time now for me to stop talking and for you to do. You have got one sheet. It's an A3 sheet. On one side is an exercise where you're giving some images and you're asked to color them using unexpected colors. This is the idea of using colors and connotation for an unexpected way. You can play with that and see what you come up with and see if there's anything interesting. Or you can just deal in black and white. Now, um, I'm going to come back. Actually, you know what? Wait. Don't do the black and white yet. Because <laughs> I haven't talked to you about black and white. Just do the unexpected color. Would you do that now? Five minutes, then come back to the video. You pause the video, I hope. Okay, now that you've finished with your colors, let me talk to you about black and white and the use of black and white colors. So, black and white. Oftentimes, especially because of print jobs, it's much, much cheaper to do something in black and white. And so we'll do the absence of color, though white and black are still colors, right? Um, this is a really interesting image. And here, it's about the refugee crisis, but we can kind of see just really sharp and arresting images can come up from using black and white in a creative and simple way. Um, here we see like the, it's about the pain that's caused and the troubles that people who have to flee from conflict zones have to face and by the breaking off of uh, their feet, they're kind of saying breaking off their roots from where they're from. Here's some more examples. Okay, Amnesty International, I think uses an interesting use of um, black and white here. Taking away all the colors of flags that we normally associate and just putting it into black and white says everyone has a right to a nationality. It's about this notion that um, there are people within the world that are disowned from their country and they have no country and Amnesty International is fighting for those people's rights and so the notion of black and white shows that people who have lost their citizenship need help from um, organizations that it's a human right to be part of a nation and then Foot Locker just doing something really interesting I think here with black and white lines um, to really have you grab uh, the attention of some you know Chuck Taylors completely different uh, connotations, but interesting. And a few more examples. Um, now it's time for your black and white exercise. Would you flip your coloring page over and you'll see this exercise here. I want you to just play around with black and white lines. And what you should end up with, I'll show you my work. Here's my unexpected colors. Just trying to do something there, right? The tomato is yellow, is the most interesting. And you can do whatever you want here, but you're trying to do something with just using black and white lines as a point of interest. Would you take five minutes now, and would you go ahead and do your black and white exercise? Come back to this video when you're finished with that. Pause the video. Okay, welcome back. You can show me tomorrow what you came up with in these exercises. What we're going to end with on the video is just this last screen. Okay, and in this last screen, I'm giving you the tips that we've reviewed. And your job now is to take this and in your sketchbooks, I want you to start to come up with ideas for what you can use for your posters. And if you remember, we have, I remembered finally who our clients were. Duh. Um, you can make a climate march poster for this Friday. You can start to work on that. Just prototypes within your sketchbook. You're not making the poster yet. I'll talk to you more about that tomorrow. The other one, 
hand dryers. Remember the sustainability board wants us to try to put graphic art and graphic design into the bathrooms to get people to use just one paper towel to dry their hands and reduce our consumption of paper towels. You, if you have a third idea, you can use that. It can be a third idea, but I think you should be working really on either a paper towel or a Climate March poster. More on that when I see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching the video. Or, ah, Wednesday. I see you Wednesday. I don't see you tomorrow, do I? Okay, not a polished video that I've put together, but uh, maybe authentic and it's as if I were actually there. Thanks for watching. See you on Wednesday.